Hey, welcome back to part two of the Java logical tutorials. Um, one thing in the run, I forgot to that close request request thingy is pretty. You know, it's actually used like this. So it's close requested. So if we want to close the window, we set running to false. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know if that actually made any difference. Uh, you know, we can close the window now. And yeah, I couldn't close the old one. So and if I click F5, the window closes anyway. So that should be added. That is necessary. Um, yeah. All right. So we're gonna load load some textures, but for that we would need to go back to the logical.org site. And you wanna? I'm gonna do download a additional library for that to help me out a little. Um, you oh, just go to installation, and then just click you to a library, and then you scroll down a little, and get to the slick util.jar and zip can be found here, and then you click on here, and then you. I guess you want to download the dot zip. I'm gonna check what's inside that zip folder. Mm. Okay. I'm not. Okay, so I guess we'll need the jar file actually. Uh, yeah, I wanna. I don't. <laughs> God, I don't wanna run it. I wanna open it. <laughs> okay, show in map, and then you take that jar file, you copy it, Control C, or you know, if you're slow and don't know much about computers, you could right click and take copy, and then you look for Eclipse or well your logical folder and then the jar folder and then you paste that in there so it adds that to the folder alright so that's done we have the slick library now and then you wanna go to your right click on your project and then pro uh, uh, do I not see build path and then Actually, just click on properties and we will get to Java build path and then libraries. And then add external jars and then add that slick jar file to your project. Now we could start loading textures. Alright? So I'm gonna create a new class for that because I wanna keep this organized. I'm gonna call that class text texture bank because it's a bank containing textures um, you know we could import the libraries later and uh, I want a private uh, hash map containing string for the reference name so we can easily access the textures and then a texture and then call it something like Textures is equal to a new hash map. All right, so we'll get a couple of errors. That's because I'm gonna have to import the hash map and then the texture. Okay. All right, um, so we have a hash map that we can add textures to. So let's create a public void, or we could, you know, do a boolean if, if you want to catch errors um, and then l load texture and then just calling uh, passing the path and the n reference name alright that's always what I like to do uh, I guess we want to return true by default or maybe not when I think about it so um, okay we create a texture texture Create a create a texture. And then if texture uh, is equal to 
texture loader dot format I'm just gonna pass in P PNG I guess if you want to if you want let's say you create an editor an editor and wanna have different formats you could get the extension of the file loaded and then do something like you know it's a str string so you can always com uh, convert every letter to uppercase uh, you know for if you wanna have multiple types uh, yeah so I'm just gonna call him passing PNG and then the actual file so you wanna create a new file input stream and then the path And then, yeah, it's not equal to null. So if the actual file was loaded, this is not a boot. Oh, and I'm gonna have a one another, <laughs> and then maybe surround everything with a big stuff. Uh, is that fine? And then try and catch. Yeah, that's ugly. Anyway, so yeah. That's some automatic generated stuff. Okay, so this basically checks so if the texture was loaded. I'm gonna I, I can set this to null by default. Um, so if the texture was loaded, we just do a textures dot put, and then the key as the name and the value as the texture, and you're all set. We could return true, and it's all good. That's our load texture function. Now public texture get texture, and then pass in the name. Uh, yeah, and then we want to check so our textures dot contains key. This is just so we don't get any runtime crashes. We don't want that at all. And then if if the textures contains the key you've given, just return textures, and then dot get passing in the name, the key, or else return null. And that's all good. So now you could. Yeah, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna check that. Yep, it's all good. So that's our my texture bank class. This is how it normally looks. Mm, I guess. Um, so in the main class, we could now create a new instance of that texture bank. So private texture bank is equal to a new texture bank. Um, and then we could do in the init I'm just gonna load some textures and then dot load texture path I'm just gonna have it in the folders later on I'm gonna add it soon uh, so player.png and then the name player static that's so yeah okay so you're gonna have the instance of this to be static if you wanna you know use it in a static method of course alright so I'm gonna open up GIMP and uh, paint a simple player yeah it's gonna be 32 by 32 remember remember that when working with textures you always want to keep them in keep the sizes in the power of two um, or else it will slow down it might slow down your game uh, or at least that's how it was before so that looks like balls so yeah always remember to do that you know to make sure that everything would run fine Okay, so that's my awesome overlay player. And just to show, 
I'm gonna have him being uh, have some areas w where he is transparent so we, I can show you that we actually can have transparency alright so I'm gonna save him save him as you know in where I have my workspace Admit. Okay, work space. Yes, thank you. And then not that. Um, the logo first, and then just here, player dot png, and then make sure save background color. Uncheck that if you have GIMP. And now I'm gonna paint it, draw him. So go into the render function, gl11 dot gl bind texture, gl11 dot gl gl texture 2D, and then the texture, texture bank dot get texture layer dot get texture ID, because in OpenGL every texture has its own ID, and if you wanna, I mean you could just do a Texture bank dot bank that gets texture and then player and then bind if you want to, but I like to keep it to the you know standard OpenGL ways just to you know just because I can. And then uh, I'm gonna finish the painting. So GL begin GL11 dot GL quartz. So we will uh, draw quadral something quadrilateral click out you know squares I like to think of them like that just normal cubes and then I'm gonna I'm gonna type everything and, and then I'm gonna explain it because Okay, that's done. So this should render a cube with the proper set texture coordinates. Now, um, oh damn it. Uh, uh, okay, so this. So I'm gonna, you know, try and paint this. So the way I paint my vert vertices and the way you should paint them, or at least the right pattern, is you should start. Damn it in one corner so if we have a cube here okay we have a cube here right and we have four vertices one two three four so this is four vertices and the pattern you should paint in rendering is you should start with this vertice which is zero zero relative to where you start the rendering and then that's one zero or if you use 2D the number of pixels and I use 32 pixels wide so that's 30, 32 0 and then when you move down here it's 32 32 and that's an ugly 3 and then when you move here that's 0 32 alright so you go from you know that in that shape and you could also start in this vertice, vertex and go like that. So, but I always start here and you know go like that. So that's how I render, and that's how it works for me. Uh, 
and then you know the texture coordinates ranges from 0 to 1 where 1 is 100% of the texture so uh, you know if we think that the texture is also a cube and hit 0, 0 is here, 1, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 1 right? and this is so I hope you understand so I, I just p t take that vertex of the texture uh, square and I put it on this vertex of the uh, you know quad of the polygon and the same with that that and that that you know that's how I do it uh, if you have a hard time understand that <laughs> and I guess you have you should go to Nihis and just check for the OpenGL polygon rendering stuff and so you know I start in the top left corner same where and I start here I start running at 100 100 and then I move 32 pixels 32 pixels 32 pixels down and then 32 two pixels down oh god damn it uh, okay so the last thing we have to do is enable textures 2d so in the init function just you'll enable your texture 2d Alright, so we are set, we should be able to run it without and there we have it. Our player rendered on on our screen and he he's as you can see transparent so it looks like you know no white background or anything. It's all good. All good. Okay, so look look at this code. I hope you understand everything. Um I guess I will in the next row will go over the whole code just as a short episode and then I will continue um, with creating I guess movements and stuff so yeah see you then